by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله ويلكم باك تو اور بروجرام رايز اند شاين الحمد لله عز وجل باك اجين ود ا نيو بروجرام نيو توبيك اند ان شاء الله عز وجل ا نيو فيرسز اوف ذا قران سو اي هوب يو كان ستي ود مي ديورينج ذا هول بروجرام ويف جوت ذا ديلي ريمايندر ويف جوت ذا ديلي حديث از ويل اند ويف اولسو جوت ا فيري بيوتيفول منكبات از ويل برايز of sayyidina ghothi pak rahmatullahi ta'ala li so please don't uh, go anywhere and inshallah so we'll not only enjoy the program but there'll be so many beautiful things that we shall be learning today and also a very important topic inshallah so we'll will tell you what the topic is later on today inshallah so inshallah so without any delay let's start with a beautiful recitation of the glorious quran sallu alal habib صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم من الله تعالى كي پناہ میں اتا ہوں شیطان مردود سے بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله کے نام سے شروع جو نہایت مہربان رحم والا يا ايها النبي اتق الله ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين اي غائب کی خبریں بتانے والے نبی اللہ کا یوں ہی خوف رکھنا اور کافروں اور منافقوں کی نہ سننا ان الله كان عليما حكيما بے شک اللہ علم و حکمت والا ہے واتبع ما يوحى اليك من ربك اور اس کی پیروی رکھنا جو تمہارے رب کی طرف سے تمہیں وحی ہوتی ہے ان الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا اے لوگو اللہ تمہارے کام دیکھ رہا ہے وتوکل على الله وكفى بالله وكيلا ارے محبوب تم اللہ پر بھروسہ رکھو اور اللہ بس یعنی کافی ہے کام بنانے والا میں جعل الله لرجل من قلبين في جوفه اللہ نے کسی آدمی کے اندر دو دل نہ رکھے وما جعل ازواجكم اللائی تظاہرون منهم امہاتكم اور تمہاری ان عورتوں کو جنہیں تم ماں کے برابر کہہ دو تمہاری ماں نہ بنایا وما جعل ادعياءكم ابناءكم اور نہ تمہارے لے پالکوں کو تمہارا بیٹا بنایا ذلكم قولكم بافواهكم والله يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل یہ تمہارے اپنے منہ کا کہنا ہے اور اللہ حق فرماتا ہے اور وہی راہ دکھاتا ہے ادعوهم لآبائهم هو اقسط عند الله انہیں ان کے باپ ہی کا کہہ کر پکارو یہ اللہ کے نزدیک زیادہ ٹھیک ہے فإن لم تعلموا آبائهم فإخوانكم في الدين ومواليكم پھر اگر تمہیں ان کے باپ معلوم نہ ہوں تو دین میں تمہارے بھائی ہیں اور بشریت میں تمہارے چچا زاد اور تم پر اس میں کچھ گناہ نہیں جو نا دانستہ تم سے صادر ہوا ہاں وہ گناہ ہے جو دل کے قصد سے کرو 
اور اللہ بخشنے والا مہربان ہے یہ نبی مسلمانوں کا ان کی جان سے زیادہ مالک ہے اور اس کی بیبیاں ان کی مائیں ہیں وَأُنُ الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ إِلَّا أَن تَفْعَلُوا إِلَى أَوْلِيَائِكُمْ اور رشتے والے اللہ کی کتاب میں ایک دوسرے سے زیادہ قریب ہیں بنسبت اور مسلمانوں اور مہاجروں کے مگر یہ کہ تم اپنے دوستوں پر کوئی احسان کرو یہ کتاب میں لکھا ہے صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ماشاء اللہ عزیل سورہ عذاب ورس ون ٹو سکس الحمد للہ وی جس لسن ٹو ود ٹرانسلیشن اینڈ اٹ جس ریلی ڈوز اوپن یور مائنڈ اینڈ یور ہارٹ اینڈ ان الحمد للہ یو نو اسپیشلی ون یو انڈرسٹینڈ وٹ دا قرآن از ٹیلنگ یو وٹ دا ورڈ آف اللہ عز و جل از اور وی کین سی وٹ از دا میسج فرام آور رب عز و جل ناؤ مینی آف از ہو کانٹ ریڈ دا قرآن اوبیسلی ویل ناٹ نو وٹ دا میسج آف اللہ از بیکاز وی ہیون ریڈی ناؤ اف وی ڈونٹ اف وی ریڈ ان ایٹ بٹ وی ڈونٹ انڈرسٹینڈ ایٹ We're still in the same boat because we don't understand. Now, it's very, very important that we understand the message of Allah. Just imagine if someone was to send you an email, you don't understand that, that email. What is the purpose of uh, us receiving that email? It's the purpose of the person sending it, there is a purpose behind it. But because we can't read it, what's the purpose of receiving it? So what we need to do is we need to understand the Quran. For that, we only need to give what, half an hour, an hour a day, you know, where we have 24 hours, where we have full sleep, where we work full time, we give time to our family as well. Can we not give one hour every day just to learn and understand the Quran? Just sit down with an alim a deen, a scholar of Islam, مبلغ اینڈ جسٹ ریڈ سرات الجنان الحمد للہ عز و جل سرات الجنان آئی تھنک از سو مینی ایون ناؤ وی ور وی گون اپ ٹو سورت الاحزاب سو جسٹ امیجن یو نو آل آف دیز پاریز اپ ٹو سورت الاحزاب دیر آل بین ریکارڈیڈ ان 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 اردو لینگویج بٹ الحمد للہ اف یو انڈرسٹینڈ انگلش دین یو سی وتھ سم ون دا قرآن علیس دا ٹرانسلیشن کنز المان از اویلیبل یو نو از اویلیبل آن دا ویب سائٹ آف داوت اسلامی یو کین ڈاؤن لوڈ یو سرات الجنان ونس یو ڈاؤن لوڈ سرات الجنان یو کین آلسو ریڈ دا دا ٹرانسلیشن آف کنز المان ان انگلش سو اٹس دیر فار از وٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ڈو از وی نیڈ ٹو ٹیک سم ٹائم آؤ فار ویری ویری بزی اسکیجول I don't think it's that busy, to be honest with you. All we need to do is make our mindset. Yes, Zen ban gaya na. Once this mindset is made, then things will become easy. Nowadays, we think it's too hard. I can't get the time. I'm very busy. I'm this, I'm that. All these lame excuses, how long are we going to make them for? I can make time for my friend. You know, you see a lot of people sometimes when you ask them to come to the masjid to offer their salah, oh, can you kapre na paak and my clothes aren't clean. Yeah, but the same, if someone invites them, let's go for a, a meal, you know, down Manchester or Bradford, yeah? And what people will say is, oh, just give me a few minutes, let me change my clothes. So when it's, when it's time to go and chill out with your mates, you've got plenty of time, we'll do everything. Mindset is already made. Yeah, but when it comes to the deen of Islam, when it comes to our future, our grave, our hereafter, we believe in all of these things, we know these things are happening, we know we are going to die one day, but we're not preparing for it. It's like someone who wants to go to the airport nowadays, you know, you've got to check in online. And I know people, you know, they, they, they try to check in online. Why? Because they can save 55 pounds. Yeah, 55 pounds. If you don't check in online in some of the, you know, the private airlines, you know, they charge you 55 pounds for checking in at the airport. So you've got to check in online to save that money. Do we, will anyone forget? Maybe first time. 
you know, you are, you've forgotten. But next time, I guarantee you, next time when you are, che- when you are flying, you're going to check in online so that you can save that 55 pounds. So when it comes to the dunya, we're ready to do anything. We're all aware, we're always alert. But when it comes to the deen, we're relaxed. Oh, okay, yeah, these kind of words, we're just making a fool of our own selves. So please, inshallah, let's make a firm intention to read the Quran and to understand the Quran, inshallah. Now let's go towards the beautiful kalam and then we'll come back for the, for the topic and inshallah we'll try to discuss the topic as well. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
پھر گمبد خزرا دکھائے آخری نبی میرے تھے مدینے بے بلائے آخری نبی میرے گمبد خزرا دکھائے آخری نبی دے دے شفاعت کی مجھے خیرات خیر سے دے دے شفاعت کی مجھے خیرات خیر سے روز قیامت بخشوائے آخری نبی پھر گمبد خزرا دکھائے آخری نبی میٹھے مدینے بے بلائے آخری نبی پھر گمبد خزرا دکھائے آخری نبی میٹھے مدینے اب وقت رحلت آ گیا تار زار کا اب وقت رحلت آ گیا تار زار کا جلوہ دکھا کل ماں پڑا ہے آخری نبی پھر گمبد خزرا دکھا ہے آخری نبی میٹھے مدینے بے بلا ہے آخری نبی پھر گمبد خزرا دکھا ہے آخری نبی سلو اگل حبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم ماشاء اللہ عز و جل ویری بیوٹیفل کلام الحمد للہ عز و جل می کلام آخری نبی صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وآلہ وسلم جی ٹبے الحمد للہ وی گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا پیرنٹس آف سیدنا غوث پاک رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ نا سیدنا غوث پاک رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ ہی واز بورن ان ٹو اے ویری ویری فیمس اینڈ ویری ویری پائس فیملی نو اونلی ہز موم اینڈ ڈیڈ بٹ ہز آنٹیز ہز انکلز They were all, mashallah, azawajal, pious people. So in return, what we need to do is if we want our children to be pious, we need to be pious ourselves. And Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak, rahmatullahi ta'ala li, his mother's name was Fatima binti Sheikh Abdullah Soma'i, rahmatullahi ta'ala li. And her kuniyat was Ummul Khair. And her laqab was Amatul Jabbar. And his father's name, Sayyid Musa, and his kuniyat with Abu Saleh, and his title, his laqab was Jangi Dost. And Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, Hasni Husseini Sayyid, yani both of his parents were also Sayyid as well. His father, uh, Abu Saleh, Musa Jangi Dost, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he was a very, very uh, pious person, a very, very God-fearing person. There's a very beautiful story about him. He says that um, one day, uh, Sayyiduna Musa Jangi Dost, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and he was really, really hungry. And he was uh, walking t- towards uh, the river, and he saw an apple that was floating towards him. And he picked up the apple, and he took a bite of the apple. As soon as he took the bite of the apple, he thought to himself, hold on, this apple doesn't belong to me. Why have I eaten it? I must look for the rightful owner and I must say sorry to him. I should ask forgiveness. So he starts to follow the current of the river and then he sees an apple tree whose branches were, were over the river. So he realized that no doubt this apple must have fallen from this tree. So he goes inside the garden and he asks this old man and this old man was Hazrat Shaydina Sheikh Abdullah Soma'i Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And he gave salam to him and he said to him that, are you the owner of the garden? Sheikh Abdullah Soma'i Rahmatullah Ali. He says that, yes, this is my garden. 
And he goes that, I was walking near, near the river and I saw an apple that was flowing. Maybe this apple has fallen from your tree and I have eaten the apple without your permission. I've come here to ask for forgiveness. Now Sayyidina Abdullah saw Ma'i Rahmatullah Alayhi, when he heard this and when he saw this young man, he thought, you know, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? Who does this nowadays? You know, a wali can recognize a wali. And he thought this person is really, really special. And he says, my son, I will only forgive you if you work for me for 12 years in my garden. And he says that, okay, if I work for you for 12 years, will you forgive me then? And he goes, yeah, we'll think about it after 12 years. So no, I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to think about it after 12 years. So 12 years passed by. Sayyidina Abdullah Soma'i rahmatullahi ta'ala, he would see this young man coming into the garden, cleaning, looking after the trees, looking after the fruit, and you know, serving him as well. And after 12 years, Ghosi Pak rahmatullahi his father, he says that, uh, Ya Sheikh, you said that after 12 years, you're going to think about forgiving me for the mistake that I've done. And he says that, yes, but there's another condition. The condition is, that you have to marry my daughter. And she has four problems. She can't see, she can't hear, she can't hold anything with her hands, and she can't walk. These are her disabilities. So Sayyiduna Abu Salih, the Sayyidina Ghosi Pak Rahmatullah's father, he says, I, I agree, I don't mind. Unless you, know, you forgive me, I don't mind marrying her. And Sayyiduna Ghothi Pak Rahmatullah's father married this woman. And when he saw her the first time, you know, there was no physical, uh, you know, disabilities. She could see, she could hear, she could walk, she could, you know, she could hold, her hands were fine. There was no disabilities at all. So he went to Abdullah Soma'i Rahmatullah Ali and he says that, Ya Sheikh, you told me that your daughter, she was deaf, dumb and blind. And she, you know, she couldn't walk, she couldn't uh, hold anything with her hands. She had these disabilities, but there's nothing wrong with her. And Abdullah Soma'i Rahmatullahi Ta'ala he says, My son, why I said my daughter was blind because she's not seen anything against the Sharia. Why I said my daughter was, she couldn't speak because she's never said anything against the Sharia. Why I said she couldn't hold things is because she's never done anything wrong with her hands. And why I said that my daughter could not walk because she has never ever walked to a place of sin. Now, my dear Islam brothers, the scholars, they say such a beautiful thing. The scholars, they say, if you have a mother like Fatima, and if you have a father like Abu Saleh, Musa, Jangi, Dost, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, then why would you not have a child like Sayyiduna Ghothi Pak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali? So now here, there's so many things that we need to understand from this story. Number one is if we want our children to be pious, to be God-fearing, to be respectful, then we need to be the same. You know, it's going to pass on with the blood, isn't it? As they say, you know, these things, they pass on with generations, they pass on with the lineage, the, the, the blood is passed on. So if I want my son to become a God-fearing person, a pious person, someone who will respect the elders and respect me as well, then I've got to do the same as well. If I want him to offer his salah, if I want him to read the Quran, I've got to do it myself. If I don't act upon the deen myself, how can I expect my children to do the same? If I've never read the Quran myself, do you think that your children will read the Quran? Maybe some people will say that, I don't know how to read it, but my son does. Even though it's nothing good, nothing to be proud of, that I don't know my son does. You know, the thing is, we as Muslims should be able to read the Quran. If we are spending money and time and effort on our children to read the Quran, why can't we spend that time and effort on ourselves? They are going to go into their own graves. They're going to be judged by Allah Azza wa according to their own actions. I will be judged according to my own actions. And if my actions are that I can't take time out to learn about my deen, I can't take time out to do this, to act upon my deen, then what am I going to reply to Allah? When the angel of death comes to me, how am I going to give my soul back to him? When I'm buried inside the grave and the munkar nakir, they come inside the grave and they ask me the questions, how am I going to answer them? 
So everyone is for themselves really. Yeah, we can support each other, we can help each other, but in, at the end of the time, we are all, you know, we're all going to be, you know, uh, asked the questions uh, separately. And every man is for himself. Are we ready for that? You know, so again, you know, a lot of people sometimes, you know, I, I was talking to a father who was really worried, genuinely worried about his children. That, you know, my children, I don't know, uh, they, they don't, uh, you know, they're not respectful to me. They don't answer me. We're always having arguments. They're 15, 16 years old. They're always, you know, uh, out of the house. You know, the thing is, how did you live your, your youth? And he replied, to be honest with you, I was the same. So if you were the same as your son and daughter, and now they're doing that, what's, why are you bothered for? Why are you worried for? Because you did the same as well, but now you do realize that, don't you? That you were wrong. Now it's time to you know, teach our own children. So therefore, it's very, very important, vital. For those parents especially who are watching this program, and you have younger children, you have teenagers. And now it's time that, you know, we brought them up according to the sunnat, according to the deen, not the dunya, not to the latest fashions, not to the latest, you know, so wood and this wood and that wood. I'm not even mentioning the first words. Yes, the film actors, you know, songwriters and ma'azala, music and all that kind of stuff. If you bring them up according to that, they're going to deviate from the deen. They're going to move away from the deen. And as a father, as a mother, you will be asked on the day of judgment. Yeah, why did you not tell your parents? Why children? Why did you not tell them off? Now you are telling them off, but they're not listening to you. Yeah, because they're old enough to understand. And what they understand is if, if we are doing wrong, then why was dad doing the same? Yeah, Sayyiduna Ghose Paak Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, he was five years old when he went to the madrasa first time. And when Qari Sahib said to him, son, read, and he read from Bismillah to 18 Pare. He was Hafiz of 18 Pare even before he joined the Madrasa. So that's where the Tarbiyat starts from, the lap. That's why they say from cradle to the grave. Yeah, it's from cradle to the grave, they need to learn knowledge. And if Ghothi Paak Rahmatullah became a Hafiz of the 18 Pare, it was because of his mother. If he became a God-fearing person, if he became someone who will fulfill the hukuk ibad of people, that was because of his father. Because his father was the same as well. Now here, I just wanted to talk about hukuk ibad hukuk ibad are the rights of people. They are very, very important. You know, I've seen people like, you know, Ghose Paak Rahmatullah his father, just for one bite of an apple, he went to ask for forgiveness. Today we do anything, you know, like I've got a plate here uh, of nuts and biscuits. Sometimes, you know, you'll have these, uh, you know, these nuts and biscuits. People will be selling them in their shops, in a grave, fruit shop especially. People will go, they are, oh, gee, kya rate hai? what's the rate for the nuts? Yeah, how, how, how the almonds, how much are they for? They'll take a snap of it and they'll start eating the almonds. You haven't even asked permission to eat them. They're at a fruit seller's shop and they've got the grapes. They're, oh, gee, kya rate laya hai? And they'll be, there, they'll be there eating the grapes. Who told you to eat them? No one gave you permission. I saw this in Medina Sharif once, that a couple of women, they walked inside a, a, a date shop. And the shopkeeper, they were asking her, oh, how much is this for? How much are these for? How much are these for? And each time they were asking about the dates, they were picking them up and they were eating them. And the shop said, you know, the keeper, he says to him, you're asking me about the price. You've already eaten one kilo of kujur. What do you want to, you're not going to buy anything. Just get out of here. Yeah. And that is guna. That is hukuk ibad. We have to give account to Allah Azza wa on the day of judgment. And then nowadays people, you know, they, they owe money to people. But how many times have they even thought to themselves that I've got to return that money back? They might be buying products, they might be going into a shop, bought something. Oh, you know, call the years, I'll put it on tick, yeah? I'll pay you later, it's been years. And I know people, they ring me up. So-and-so came to my jewelry shop, he bought gold of me, they haven't even paid me back for that. So-and-so per -per persons come to my bookshop, they bought some books of me, they haven't even paid for that. So-and-so person came to my shop, bought carpet, bought some sofa, mattresses, they haven't even paid for them. Now this is very, very important. As Muslims, we are, go we are going to be answerable to Allah on the day of judgment. And not only Allah, hukuk ibad is something, if you do not 
pay up to, or, or ask for forgiveness from that person, you're going to be held responsible on the day of judgment as well. And then also, you know, you're not invited to a wedding. People gay crash, don't they? You know, like, oh, khairi, I know I've got inside contacts. Yeah, and they'll gay crash into a wedding. They'll gay crash into uh, someone's parties. And, you know, they're not invited. But yet they, they know that no one knows me. That theology, khairi, let's chip in, let's go inside. That is wrong as well. In the same way as well, selling land. And I've seen this many times. This land has been sold many times. People are so... You know, uh, you know, they say hard-hearted that they'll buy, they'll sell the land that even doesn't even belong to them as well. And these are very, very, you know, people, have, they don't have the fear of Allah anymore. They don't have the fear of Allah. Nothing, you know, the people will borrow something. They'll never return it back. Even like a pen, they might borrow a pen from someone. They deliberately put it in their pocket and they'll walk off. Yeah, one Sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, from Medina, he traveled to Damascus. As he reached Damascus, you know, he was going to write something. And he borrowed a, a pen tip from someone to write it. And then by mistake, he bought it with him. As he reached back to Medina, he realized, oh my God, what have I done? I have bought someone's pen with me. He went back to Damascus to give that pen back to him. That's what you call fear of Allah. Ajikal Yanab, you know, so many money that we owe people, Azaru, thousands of pounds we owe people, and then Bichare come up to us, you know, please give owe me money, to be about it, oh, you're not there, your son. Then when they ask me a few times, yeah, you, you're going to force me to pay you. Yeah. yeah, I don't have it. What are you going to do about it? You think that you're going to get away with that, fool? You know, you think you're going to get away by saying or by making, you know, by threatening him that I'm not going to pay you money back. Go wherever you want. No, they're not going to pay you money but on the day of judgment, you'll realize what you've done. So remember, hakuku ibad are very, very important. The Prophet sallallahu has said, who will be the poor person on the day of judgment? Muflis kawn hai? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the sahaba ikram, they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a muflis, a poor person, is the one who doesn't have dirham with him. He doesn't have gold or silver. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, no. Asa nahi Muflis will be the one that will on the day of judgment bring salah, fasting, hajr, zakat, but nothing will come into his use. Why? Because he swore at someone. He lied to someone. He hit someone. He threatened someone. He made someone feel scared. So his salah, his fasting, his reading the Quran, his hajj, his zakat, all the reward that he gained from all of this ibadat will be slowly distributed amongst all the people that he wronged, he did wrong to. Now just imagine on the day of judgment, how are we going to feel? How are we going to be showing our face to Allah Azza wa Jal? So remember, it's very, very important. At the end of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, he will be thrown into the fire of hell because of the sins of other people. Because when all the good deeds of his are running out, there's got no good deeds left anymore. So what's going to happen is their sins will be given to this person. So because of other people's sin, this person will fall into the fire of hell. In another place, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Tum log hukuk haq walu ke sapurd kar do. You know, whatever rights that you owe to people, return it back to them. Hatta ke be seeing wali ka seeing wali bakri se badla liya jayega. A goat that was hit by a goat with the horns, she will take revenge on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Sayyiduna Abu Musa Saleh Jangi Dost Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. MashaAllah, the father of Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. He had the passion of Neki Ki Dawad. Allah Azza wa mentioned in the Quran, we are the best of the ummas because we invite towards good. And the taqwa and the fear of ummad, fear ghameh ummad that Sayyiduna Abu Musa Saleh Jangi Dost Rahmatullahi Ali had. He once saw the king and his uh, servants, they were carrying barrels of wine, of alcohol. And when he found out, he, he broke them all and there was alcohol everywhere. And when the king found out, he, 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 he called Musa Saleh Jangi Dost Rahmatullahi Alayhi, go and bring him to me. So when he went there, the king said to him, why did you break the barrels of wine? You know, my servants were carrying. He goes, because I have a duty. 
Yeah, I have a duty, I've, I've been given a duty. And he goes, who gave you this duty? And he says, the one who made you the king gave me the duty as well. And the king started to tremble. He fell onto his feet and he says that, please forgive me, go and carry on. And then he said to him that I'm going to give you a status in my, uh, my government. You could be an advisor, you know, you could be the one, a judge. And he says, why shall I accept your invitation when Allah has already given me that? status as a as a warner you know as a a, a a muballigh as a warner as someone who invites towards goodness so subhanallah even at that time my dear islam brothers and viewers of madani channel we should be doing the same people are committing sins in front of us people are ma'azallah doing so many bad things yet they'll be doing it in front of us but we won't have that power sometimes say oh make a huh I don't have knowledge. Yeah, who told you not to have knowledge? Alhamdulillah, it's something that you should achieve, something that you should have. You know, I, no one, no, not everyone can become a scholar. Not everyone can become an alim -e deen But we are all muballis of Islam. We are all answerable to Allah on the day of judgment. We have a duty of care for the Muslim ummah. We have a duty as, as, as Muslims. We are muballis as well. Allah mentions in the Quran that you be part of a group or be a group that invites towards goodness and forbids evil. Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, you know, even if someone doesn't make me the judge, I am still a ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And as a Muslim, it is my duty. No one gave me that duty. It is my duty that I need to start to make sure that I do good things as well. Now in the same way, so many blessings, so many glad tidings of those people who invite towards good as well. Another very beautiful thing, uh, when a Muslim brother meets his brother, one has a smile on his face, muskurata hai, uske liye sadaqa hai, it is a charity for him. Or neki ki dawat dena aur burai se mana karna bhi sadaqa hai. So it is also a charity in the same way, subhanallah, we can do so many things. We could help the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in so many ways that we could help the Ummah. Subhanallah. Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak Rahmatullah Alayhi, we're talking about his family and we're talking about not only his parents, but I want to just expand that as well, you know, to his own family as well. Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak Rahmatullah Alayhi, he says, Alhamdulillah, in my time, according to my bayans, the bayans that he did, the speeches that he did, he says, 500 people accepted Islam and more than 100,000 robbers, stealers, fusako, fujar, sinners, and you know, bad people have just done Tawbah. And he says, Subhanallah, Ghose Paak Rahmatullah Ali, most of his time in his life, he was 90 years old when he passed away. So in them, you know, if we could say that for the first 20 years, he's been gaining knowledge. But after that, for 30 years, Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak Rahmatullah Ali taught people about the deen. And then 40 years of his life, he spent doing speeches. And SubhanAllah, what a beautiful story about him doing the bayans, doing the speeches. You know, he, because he was not an Arab, he was born in Jilan, he was a non-Arab. Well, you know, one day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came into his dream. And he says that, my son, why do you not do speeches? And he goes that, uh, because... I'm not an Arab, you know, how can I speak eloquent in, uh, Arabic in front of those Arabs? And he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, open your mouth. So he opened his mouth and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put his blessed saliva in his mouth seven times. And he says, go and do speeches. The next night he had this another dream. And in the dream he saw his grandfather, Sayyiduna Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. And he says the same as well, why do you not do speeches, my son? He goes that because I'm not an Arab, you know, and he puts seven, six times saliva in his mouth. And subhanallah, and he says, go my son, now do the speech because of the blessing of the saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will put barakat in your tongue. He will put barakat in your voice. And the scholars, they say that there were not less than thousand, fifty thousand people, eighty thousand people in the, you know, the ijtimas of Sayyidina Ghothi Paak rahmatullah. The gatherings used to be so huge. And when he would talk, the people who were sat in the front, they could hear the same. And and the people at the back could hear the same as well. We need mics, don't we? 
Yeah, we need bikes, we need cameras, you know, for our voice to reach anywhere. But Sayyidina Khothi Pak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, one of his karamat, his miracle was that he did not need a mic. His saintly miracle is that his voice would reach to the back as well. And people would accept Islam. People would, alhamdulillah, learn so much knowledge from Sayyidina Khothi Pak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. The tafsir of the Quran, one day he was doing the, the bayan. And the knowledge that Allah Ta'ala Azza wa Jal gave him, a person, a scholar that was sat, you know, he, when every time Sayyidina Khothi Pak Rahmatullah Ali would tell them a commentary of the Quran, he said, I know that, I know that, I know that. When they went up to about a few times, I don't know exactly how number he, how much number he was, but then Sayyidina Khothi Pak Rahmatullah Ali he goes, I don't know that, I don't know that. And he says, I know many, many commentaries regarding that as well. So where the knowledge of the normal scholars finished, that's where Ghothi Park's knowledge started from. Subhanallah. And Sayyiduna, Ghothi Park, Rahmatullah Ali's whole family, you can say his whole clan, they are very, very pious people. They were known as the, the Sharif family, the Ashraf family, because they were so pious, Alhamdulillah. Now in some countries like in uh, Tunisia, where we went, the, the Ashraf, the Sharifs are the ones who are the Saadat-e Kiram. Alhamdulillah, we went to a village and I was told that all the village are Sharif. Yani they are all, mashallah, azawajal, sadat kiram Subhanallah. Sayyidina Hothi Park's parents, his uncles, his aunts, his children, every single one of them was a wali Allah, azawajal, subhanallah. And that is why you get the blessing. So, you know, you might be asking, how can everyone become a wali? You know, because every one of them was, mashallah, a scholar of deen. Every one of them had the knowledge of the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now when you have the knowledge and you act upon that knowledge, Allah azza wa jal gives you that status. Allah puts that love of yours into the heart of people. That's why people start loving you. You know, he says that when a person is God-fearing, he has the knowledge of Allah. And when Allah loves him, he says to Jibreel, I love him, you love him as well. And tell the people to love him as well. So Allah puts that love of you in the hearts of these people. That's why they come and they start to love you. They start to respect you. You know, it's because of Allah. And so on. Never ever think to yourself, it's a shaitanic whisper. It's a satanic whisper that I've reached to that status because of my knowledge. Who gave you the akal? Lala akal diti The akal was given to you by Allah. The akal, the knowledge that you have given, Allah is the one that gave you this knowledge as well. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Khothi Pak rahmatullahi ta'ala his mother, she was a very, very pious woman, like we heard in the, the opening story, you know, that she'd never seen anything against Sharia. She's never said anything against Sharia. She's never walked to a place of sin. She's never hold and held anything which is sinful. And she was a, a wali Allah herself as well. So if you have a wali as a father, a waliya as a mother, then why would you not have a wali or a waliya as the parents? Now remember, my dear Islamic brothers, and viewers of Madani channel, we will be asked about our children on the day of judgment. So it's very, very important that we do become pious ourselves. Each and every one of us will be asked regarding our children. There is a very uh, famous verse inside the glorious Quran, para number 28, Surah Al-Tahreem, verse number 6, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, believers, Save yourselves and your family from that fire. Jiska Jiske Indan, whose fuel Admi or Patarhe shall be humans and stones. Save yourself. So that begs the question, how can we save ourselves? How we need to save ourselves is that we need to make sure that we offer our salah. We need to make sure that we read the Quran. We need to make sure that we act upon the, the sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes parents, they come up and they say, my son doesn't listen to me. My daughter, does, they've rebelled against me. I'm fed up with them. Please tell me to do something. And you ask them, Haji Saab or Haji, mashallah, Chaudhary Saab, whoever you are, do your son, do you read your salah, do you offer your salah? 
well, I, when I get the time, yeah, I do, but I'll be honest with you, I don't really. So we in return do not listen to the commands of Allah. We do not follow the commands of Allah. We don't listen to the commands of Allah. We don't act upon them. Why would our children listen to us? Why would they act upon the sayings that we told them? Why, you know, they obviously, when we are not following Allah, why would they follow us as well? What goes around comes around. We need to remember that we need to be practicing Muslims. There is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam that has been quoted in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Tum sab apne mutaallikin ke sardar aur hakim ho. All those people who are under you, you are their leader. Or tum sab roze qiyamat uski ra'iyat ke baare mein poocha jayega. You will be asked about your subjects. You will be asked about your people. Is hadith paak ke tehaz shahar Bukhari farmate hain. Ra'iyat se murad woh hai jo kisi ki negebani mein ho. All those people, if you are a manager at a place, so all those people, workers that are working under you, you are going to be asked about them as well. At home, you are the leader of the family. You'll be asked about your wife. You'll be asked about your children on the day of judgment because they are working under you. If you are a boss, if you are the owner of a company and you have, you know, employees on the day of judgment, you know, forget the government asking you about the employees. You'll be asked about your employees on the day of judgment. So make sure that we have an answer ready that we can say to Allah Azza wa that, Ya Allah, yes, these were my people and I started and I've done so much for them as well. Now, uh, an example of bringing up your children. But before we, I go into that, let's go and uh, listen to the daily reminder for today. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani Hanbali radiallahu ta'ala, a great saint of Islam, a great example for us to all follow. And when we study his life, his achievements, his struggles, his sacrifices, subhanAllah, we become aware of why he is so renowned in the Islamic world today, why he is respected so highly by people. And the simple answer to that is that Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani radiallahu an bowed his head before Allah alone. He did not compromise when it came to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commands found in the Qur'an. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him such superiority, such fame, such renown in the world. The people who never met him, people who never sat with him, subhanAllah, love him so dearly. So he rules their hearts. In his lifetime, he wasn't a king of an area, but a thousand years later, He's the king of the people's hearts. That people are willing to do anything for Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu ta'ala. Which shows that if you are sincere and your servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true, then insha'Allah ta'ala what will happen? Allah jalla wa ala will make your love enter the hearts of the people. Do everything for Allah. This is what we learn from the life of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiallahu ta'ala. And the moment you turn away from this, you do things for people, then know that that's when your days are numbered. That's when you will go downhill and you will lose that respect and honor that people have for you. So we should always do things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, as He is the one who will grant us reward. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are watching our program Rise and Shine. And alhamdulillah azza wa jal. We've got a very uh, beautiful topic about the parents of Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. There's a very uh, beautiful story of uh, how the tarbiyat was given to Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak as a child. How he was groomed, how he, he was brought up by his parents. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullahi Ghothi Paak Rahmatullahi he mentions that uh, it was the days of Hajj and one day I went to the jungle and I started following a bull and all of a sudden the bull turned around to me and says Ya Abdul Qadir Ma li hadha khuliqta Oh Abdul Qadir you were not born for these kind of things 
you know, where other children were following her. You know, like you have uh, sometimes a bull, you know, in, in the olden days, now even in Pakistan, in many places, you don't have that anymore. But you had an animal and kids were chasing it in the, in the streets. And Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullah Ali says that the bull stopped, turned around and says, Abdul Qadir, you were not created for that. So he got so worried, so scared that he went back home and he says to his mother that I want to go in the path of Allah to Baghdad. I want to gain the knowledge of Islam. Baghdad was the city of knowledge at that time. Many, many people, even from Europe, people used to go to Baghdad to gain knowledge because it was at a peak at its, you know, at its peak at that time. And Huzur Ghose Paak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he reached there and during his time uh, as a student of Islam, so many things that he went through. You know, just imagine, you know, he went through a time where there was, you know, there was a famine in Baghdad. People could not afford to eat food. Nowadays, if I don't get my burger and chips and my pizzas, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go. Yeah, you know, the food isn't good. Ghothi Paak, Rahmatullah Ali, the scholars, they write, for 25 years or more, he spent in the jungle eating the leaves of the trees just to stay alive. Just to stay alive, he ate the leaves of the trees. Now that's what you call passion for the deen, passion for the knowledge of Islam. We don't sadly have that passion today. You know, but Pyar Islam by you, what we need to understand is we need to start to learn the deen of Islam. From a tender age, we should start to teach our children. When they come back home, what should they say? Hello, hi, I'm home. Yeah, that's not what I need to say. I need to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You need to teach that the children. When you, when you go out, teach them, give salam again. Yeah, you can say, Khuda Hafiz, or, you know, Allah Rab Raka, Allah Raziz, whatever, later on. But first of all, say salam. Read the dua when you leave the home. When you come back home, read Bismillah rahman rahim and walk inside. You know, act upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When they sit down to eat, make sure they eat with the right hand because children sometimes tend to eat with the left hand. There's no sin in that. But as parents, we need to rectify them in a beautiful manner. He said, you know, eat with the right hand. No, no, no like that. With, you know, with, with, with passion, with love. Uh, please eat with the right hand. My son, eat with the right hand. And inshallah, they'll learn and they'll act upon that as well. And the way that you teach them, the way you come across to them, that is very, very important as well. Don't come across with them in a harsh manner. If they've done something wrong, don't shout at them. Don't scold them. Don't make them fearful of you. Make them as your best friends. Your son, your daughter should be your best friend. Rather than them going elsewhere and asking other people or going onto the internet to find out solutions or to find out answers for the questions they've got in their minds, they should be asking you. You should be next, next to your friends and you should have your children and you should be asking them and they should be asking you regarding the questions of deen. Many of the time, you know, the parents, they don't have that bonding with their children. The bonding is so weak. That is why children are so distant from their parents. Yeah, Sayyiduna Ghothi Paak, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, you know, he was young when his father passed away and he was young when he left his mother. So that parenting wasn't there for him. But, you know, them 18 years that he stayed with his mom, you know, she was the one that groomed him to what he was. So always remember, you know, your child, what he grows up to be. I know I've read so many interviews of, you know, serial killers. I've read interviews of murderers, of robbers, of those people who were bad, you know, bad influence in the community. And majority of them, you know what they say? It's because we had a, a bad upbringing. We had a really, you know, tough childhood. We were never, you know, given that love from our parents. And because of they were not given that love to them from their parents, that's why they ended up being serial killers. Okay, you know, they've got brain to understand as well. But that grooming, if that wasn't right, then at the end of the day, you're going to have that as well. How can you say to your son, you know, don't smoke when you're smoking yourself? How can you say to your son, don't go to a bad place when you're going there as well? How can you say to your son now that don't listen to music when you are listening to music? How can you say to your son, don't flirt with women? Yeah, don't flirt with girls, do girls, don't flirt with boys when you are doing the same as well. How are you going to make sure your son don't do that, your daughters don't do that? Very important. As Muslims, we need to understand 
the way we are now with our children is going to affect them when they grow up. And Alhamdulillah, I've met parents that are giving time when their children come back from school, they'll make sure, they'll ask them, my putter, what did you learn today? In school, what did you do? What's your homework? Can you finish your homework? And there are some children who don't even do their homework. They'll go back to the madrasa, they'll go back to school. And when the teachers ask them on the weekend, did you do your homework? Oh, no, miss. I had to do this. I was ill. I was, they're going to lie. Why? Because they've seen mom and dad lie at home. Yeah. When someone's knocking on the door for chanda, for donation, for the masjid. Yeah. The, the son will open the door and the father will say, oh, tell him I'm not at home. And that son's going to say, oh, my father said I'm not at home. It's happened. It's happened. So we are teaching them to lie, yet we want them to not to lie to us. We are teaching them to do bad things, yet we want them not to do bad things. It's just how, you know, what kind of a logic are we acting upon? You know, what, what is We're doing wrong ourselves, but we expect them to do good. Yeah, you don't go to a field and you sow seeds of uh, an apple tree. You don't expect mangoes to grow from there, do you? You know, you've got a banana tree. You don't expect apples to grow on that banana tree. It doesn't work. Kujura na darakht laasa. Beech ke ra boya, sebe na darakht. E ke ho ja, kujur ko ne lage. Or lala kujur kis ra lagan, seb na darakht laye. You put an apple tree. How you do, what do you expect to get dates from there? So you are, you know, what kind of a seed are you putting into your son or daughter? You're putting a seed of sin and you expect them to do good. You know, you are putting the seed of, of, of them committing sins are going against the commands of Allah and you want them to be a, become a pious wali Allah. We don't forgive people. You know, you're sat in your family and you're talking about, oh, you for a fulan isra kita, fulan isra kita. Kadana maaf kare, never ever do that. And then when they make dua, ya Allah, miki maaf kare you do. How will, you know, why, why, why are you thinking? You are asking Allah to forgive you, but you're not ready to forgive the third person. You are asking Allah to make your son a pious person. But you are not even trying to become a pious person yourself. Tika Allah Azza wa Jal, he mashallah, his shan is that he can, you know, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam grew up in the home of Fir'aun. Mashallah, he was a prophet of Allah. You know, so many people like that as well. You know, so many awliya Allah, they were born into a family of non-Muslims. Yet when they grew up, mashallah, they become Muslims and they became one of the greatest wali of their time. So it happens. Allah Ta'ala, you know, miracles can happen. Allah can do anything He wants. But the thing is, let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we've got to give a bit of time and effort. We've got the daily hadith. Let's listen to the daily hadith. And then we'll also go a kalam as well about the mankabat of Ghosi Pak, rahmatullahi. We'll learn that as well, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. The final Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once received news that a well-known warrior hailing from Najd, modern day Riyadh, by the name of Durthar. His full name was Durthar bin Harith Muharabi. He was not yet Muslim at this time. Now, he had prepared an army to attack Madinatul Munawwara. So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam set off with his own army of 400 companions to face them. When Du'athur came to know that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already entered the city, he hurried forth and climbed the mountains with his army. Now, during this time, an individual from his army known as Habban was captured and went on to accept Islam in the prophetic court. It just so happened to rain heavily on that day. So the Prophet began drying his clothes near a tree. The non-Muslims observed from the peaks of the mountains, finding the companions occupied in their own work and the Holy Prophet Wasallam by himself. They began to rouse Du'athar to attack the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the former began to say, if I am unable to kill Muhammad, na'udhu billah, then may Allah kill me. He raised his sword above the blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's head and asked, who will save you from me now? The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, subhanallah, 
replied, Allah will save me from you. As soon as this was said, the archangel Jibreel alayhi salam descended and struck Dothar on the chest with such force that he fell over. And what happened when he fell over? The sword fell from his hands. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam immediately took hold of the sword and asked, now who will save you from me? Dothar responded, nobody can save me from you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, subhanallah, we call him the Rasul of Rahmah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam felt sympathy for his helplessness, subhanallah. Not only did he forgive Dothar, but he also returned his sword. Now if there was an enemy and they were trying to attack us and we got hold of their weapons, we wouldn't necessarily give them back. But subhanallah, this is the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Dothar was deeply impressed and inspired by the noble character of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He then recited the kalima and became a Muslim at that very moment. He proceeded to return to his people and began inviting them to Islam. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, the mercy and the compassion that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam turned a person who was not a Muslim into accepting the kalima, into accepting Islam, and then not only that, but preaching it to his tribe. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My Islam brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we're learning about the beautiful life of the parents of Sayyidina Ghothi Park, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. If you just join us, welcome to our program. We're talking about the upbringing of children. One of the most important things that uh, Sayyidina Ghothi Park, rahmatullahi alayhi, was taught when he was a child was never to lie. You know, it's a very uh, important story when he asked permission from his mother to travel to Baghdad. And on the way, you know, his mother, she sewed 40 gold coins under his arms here. And when Ghothi Park, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he was stopped by a robber. And the robbers asked him, have you got anything? When, he was, when they started robbing everyone, he says, yeah, I've got 40 gold coins. And he goes, where are they? He goes, they're sewn here. So the robber takes him to the boss and the boss man says, you know, have you got 40 gold coins? And he goes, yes, I have. Where are they? They're sewn under my armpit. And he goes, you could have saved your money. Why did you tell us? And he says that when I left home, my mom said to me, son, whatever happens, whatever situation you are in, do not lie. So why shall I go against the words of my mom? So therefore, I've told you the truth. Now, one thing, if we teach our children one beautiful habit, is a habit that they should always speak the truth. Never ever lie. You know, this, uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that Beshak Sachai Neki Ki Taraf Le Jati Hai. You know, truthfulness will take you or will lead you towards goodness. And goodness will lead you towards paradise. Or Beshak Banda Sach Bolta Rehta Hai. That no doubt a person indeed he will speak the truth and he will be written down as a Siddiq in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Siddiq means the most truthful. That is also a title of Abu Bakr. Siddiq, the most truthful. Subhanallah. So what does truthful take? It will take you to goodness. Now again, give you a scenario. You're driving your car. You were not wearing a seatbelt. You got flushed by the coppers, you know, you're pulled onto the side and they come up to you, you wind your window down. Do you know why I stopped you? And you say, no, why? Yeah, you didn't have your seatbelt on. No, I had my seatbelt on, I had it on. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I did. Why are you lying? Now, because of that lying, you're gonna get into more trouble. And Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, speaking the truth saves you. If he can save you from the problems in this dunya, then speaking the truth will inshallah save us on the day of judgment as well, inshallah Azza wa Jal. The one who is, uh, who becomes habitual in speaking the truth, Allah Ta'ala usay nek kar bana dega, Allah will make him a pious person. 
So therefore, those who speak the truth, Allah will make them a pious person. So you know, the, the, there's a saying, isn't there? If you lie once, you've got to lie a hundred times to cover that lie. And so many times, the, the children have this habit. If you ask them, did you do this? They say, no, they didn't. Who did it? My brother did it. Who did it? He did it. Did you do your homework here? No, I didn't. Why? Because I was ill. All these lies, what that happens is they get into trouble. They might get a detention from school. They might get a warning from school. They'll get into trouble at home. Again, why would that happen? Is because parents may be at home. The environment is in the good environment. Uski adat achhe kam karne ki ho jati hai. The one who speaks the truth, he will have a habit of doing good things. Or phir kya? Uski barakat se wo marte vakt nek kam re, tak nek rehega. Because of the habit of uh, speaking the truth, he will, inshallah, so he'll die. Until he dies, he will be doing good things. He will keep away from bad things. Or Allah Azza wa Jal will write him as a Siddiq and his Khatima, his ending will be with Iman. And he will be saved from every types of punishment. And he, har qism ka sawab pata, he'll get so many good deeds. And then dunya bhi usse sacha kehne, acha samajne lagti hai. The world will think of him as a good and a pious person. And the last one, uski izzat logun ke dilu mein baith jati hai. His respect will be engraved in the hearts of people. So this is the benefit of speaking the truth. Let's go to a mankabat of Zidina Ghothi Paak, rahmatullahi alayhi, and we'll wind up the program as well, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ay shahe jilan, ay shahe jilan, ay mire miran, ay mire miran, nazre karam khudara, peeron ke peer, nazre karam khudara, roshan zameer, nazre karam khudara, nazre karam khudara sarkar ghaus e azam nazar e karam khudara mera khali ka sabr do mera khali ka sabr do main faqeer hu tumhara nazre karam khudara ae shahe jina nazre karam khudara ae mere mera nazre karam khudara nazre karam khudara sab ka koi na koi duniya mein aasra hai sab ka koi na koi duniya mein aasra hai mera bajuz tumhare mera bajuz tumhare sahara nazre karam khudara ae mere mera nazre karam khudara ae peere peera nazre karam khudara nazre karam khudara maula ali ka sadqa Dada piya ka sadka Ganjay shakar Ay shahe jina Nazre karam khudara Ay meere meera Nazre karam khudara Nazre karam khudara ये अताए दस्तगीरी कोई मेरे दिल से पूछे 
یہ عطا دستگیری کوئی میرے دل سے پوچھے وہی آ گئے مدد کو وہی آ گئے مدد کو میں نے جب جہاں پکارا نظرے کرم خدا را اے میرے میرا نظرے کرم خدا را اے پیر پیرا نظرے کرم خدا را نظرے کرم خدا را یہ تیرا کرم ہے مرشد جو بنا لیا ہے اپنا یہ تیرا کرم ہے مرشد جو بنا لیا ہے اپنا کہاں روسیا فریدی کہاں مجھ سا یہ نکم کہاں سلسلہ تمہارا نظر کرم خدا را پیروں کے پیر نظر کرم خدا را روشن زمیر نظر کرم خدا را نظر کرم خدا را صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ماشاء اللہ عزیل ویری بیوٹیفل کلام کلام پاک الحمد للہ نظر کرم خدا را سبحان ون مائی فیوریٹس کلام ٹو بی انشی من قبد اف سیدنا غوث پاک رحمۃ اللہ علیہ وی اونلی گاٹ ا کپل اف منٹس سو لیٹس وائنڈ اپ اور پروگرام وات وی لرن ٹوڈے مائی ڈیئر اسلام برادرز از دا رول اف پیرنٹس ناؤ سیدنا غوث پاک رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ہز پیرنٹس رول واز سو بیوٹیفل دیٹ سبحان اللہ عز و جل ہی گرو اپ ٹو بی ا پائس اینڈ ا گریٹ فرینڈ اف اللہ اینڈ ا گریٹ اسکالر اف اسلام اف وی وان اور چلڈرن to become scholars to become pious then we need to make sure that we become pious as well may allah taala reward us all please take care of yourselves and keep watching madni channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu taala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the grace of allah by the grace of allah even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and shine and the sun will rise and